A warm welcome to your Barbie this day. It's not April Fool's joke. The Barbados Police Service will be utilising breathalyzer testing on the island's road from April 1. Speaking this evening on a popular calling programme on 98.1 FM, Police Public Relations Officer Acting Inspector Rodney Innes said that officers have now completed extensive training and they're in a position to enforce the law. This was passed sometime in 2017. Uh -huh. But we had to do a lot of training. We had to get the equipment in and we had to do internal training among the police officers. Right. And we have decided formally that this breathalyzer will be launched from the 1st of April. From, from As of the 1st of April, wow. we are educating people now right. so that they will know. Uh -huh. They can't say they don't know. I mean, even if they say they don't know, we will still be enforcing. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be prosecuting persons. We want to educate them to help to have safer roads for right. you and for me. Members of the public raised questions about how the breathalyzer testing will be applied. And it's assured that the procedure will be carried out fairly and without bias to any race or socioeconomic class. We don't target those people. We target bad drivers, drunk drivers. And um, what the law provides is that police officers are not allowed to just willy nilly pull over a person and test them. The circumstances under which you, you will, if you're driving and you're speeding, if you're erratic and you're driving, if you've gone through a traffic light, let's say, or something like that, where some, you've done something to show the police officers that you're not a good, competent driver at that point in time, if you're committed a traffic offense. If we have reason to believe that you have excessive alcohol in your system, then we can, if you suspect that, we can test you. Mm -hmm. And there's some other reason, but we cannot, the police officers are advised not to just go and point to your public, pick up a person and say, well, they want to test you. Sorry. Staff at Western Union Shore Pay Payment Centre in Oystings are shaken up after an attempted robbery by a gunman this evening. Store owner Joel McCarthy told the media that no one was injured during the incident. Today, we had an incident, an attempted robbery. Uh, fortunately for us, um, they didn't get away with anything. Um, the police were very quick to respond and they're looking into the matter. What time the incident occurred, sir? As far as I know, it ha happened around 3.26. Were any of the staff members injured? No one was injured. Right now they're just traumatized. Okay. But no one was injured. Um, he attempted to get over the, between the ceiling and the cage, but apparently it was um, too small. Was he armed? Yes, he was. Uh, from what I understand, he had a gun, mm -hmm. uh, which he uh, removed from his haversack, mm -hmm. and um, he well, then then attempted to get over the to get into the um, area where the girls were. Uh, for, <laughs> fortunately for us, he wasn't able to, and then he just jumped and ran. In other news this Thursday, players in the tourism industry in Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean will soon have health and safety and environmental standards to improve their operations for their workers and their guests. During a brief ceremony today, representatives of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, signed a letter of agreement with officials from the CARICOM Regional Organization for Standards, cross -Q. Standards are voluntary instruments. However, the requirements of those standards can be made mandatory through a technical regulation. We do have some member states that their Standards Act speaks to compulsory standards, and so they can so do make the standards compulsory. Um, so the intention really is, since we're talking about affecting health and safety, there is a legitimate objective to make the requirements of those standards mandatory. So they could be implemented, right? Now implemented implementation really doesn't mean that automatically it would be a technical regulation. They would use good regulatory practices to determine what form of implementation. Dr. Lisa Indar, Director of Surveillance, Disease Prevention and Control at CARFA, said this segment of the Regional Tourism and Health Program is critical given the vulnerability of the region's tourism industry to health, food, safety and environmental sanitation threats. The Regional Hospitality, Health, Safety and Environmental Sanitation Standards 
which I would refer to as HSC after this, is one of the nine components of CARPA's holistic regional tourism and health program. So recognizing that the health of the Caribbean economies are closely related to the health of travel and tourism industry, and given that we are the most tourism dependent region in the world, and that our tourism is vulnerable to health, food, safety, and environmental sanitation threats, CAFA established this regional tourism and health program in 2014. The THP is unique. We are dealing with the tourism sector, but developing a health program to address health, safety, and environmental threats. To effectively address these threats to tourism, it requires a holistic, multi-pronged approach. The THP thus devised a multifaceted, multi-sectoral program that included the following regional public health goods. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 162 new COVID-19 cases, 77 males and 85 females from the 1,005 tests conducted on Wednesday. The cases comprised 29 persons under the age of 18 and 133 who were 18 years and older. The number of persons in isolation facilities was 59, and there were 1,686 persons who were in home isolation. As of March 2, there were 316 deaths from the viral illness. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and Keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Trinidad, the hospital occupancy rates in the healthcare system are the lowest they've been since early April 2021. Principal Medical Officer Dr. Miriam Abdul Richard says the peak of this wave of the virus was noticed around December 23, 2021, with the hospital occupancy rate at 84%. Since then, officials have noticed a gradual decline in the occupancy rates, just having 270 patients on Wednesday morning. 225 across the high acuity or the hospitals treating the severely and critically ill patients and 45 at the step down facilities treating recovering patients. And yet again, this is one of the lowest numbers of patients that are being treated since the May 2021 wave that we have seen. She says similar trends are noticed in the e, &E departments, which only had 29 persons awaiting transfer to hospital on Wednesday none of whom need ICU care. On the international front, UK's president says his country's defence lines were holding against the Russian attack, but there has been no respite in Moscow's shelling of Ukraine since midnight. We get the details from Reuters TV. The unbreakable people of invincible Ukraine. Exactly two years ago, the first case of COVID-19 was registered in Ukraine. It's been a week now that another virus attacked, a different disease, and those who suffer from a harsh syndrome of annexation and occupation of foreign lands. A week ago at 4 a.m., Russia invaded Ukraine, our independent Ukraine, our land, a sharp fit of aggression, megalomania and persecution mania heavy psychological complexes, and as a result, missile complexes. Russia's missile and bomb strikes of Ukraine cities are a confession that they failed to do anything substantial on our soil. 
Cherny, Sumi, Mikolaev keep their defenses. Odessa, they seek to ruin our Odessa, but the only thing they are going to see is the seabed of the Black Sea, as they themselves are at the bottom. So that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.